Today we're recapping day three of the World Junior Championships, which took place on December the 28th. We had four very interesting games, some big games that certainly changed the standings a little bit. We had some pretty serious injuries as well as a bit of a controversy. We'll discuss all the latest from the World Juniors coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have day three in the books now with the World Junior Championships. As I record this, day four is now underway. We had four games completed yesterday. Let's recap the scores, take a look at some key injuries that we saw happen in the first couple days, as well as discuss the controversy with the Team Canada versus Team Russia game that we saw yesterday as well. Now, first of all, let's recap the scores. We saw Team Finland beat Slovakia by a score of 8-1, to one, which was certainly a very lopsided win for the Finns. As we discussed before in Group A, Team Sweden and Finland are pretty much the main teams there. I think they have a best chance to really do any damage in this tournament. And unfortunately, the Slovaks uh, fought the reign of the defending champions and went down hard with an 8-1 to victory. Now the Finns did suffer a, a pretty significant injury earlier in this tournament as well which we'll get into as well here shortly. Now one of the teams I said was going to be a bit of an underdog but likely might surprise some teams this year would be Germany and they did pull out a victory over the host nation of Czech Republic by a 4-3 to score. Now the Germans have been led by guys like Dominic Bach and Tim Stutzel all around pretty solid play. Uh, certainly a very entertaining team to watch and like I said even though they lost to the U.S. in their first game they did have a really good start to the game and gave the U.S. a little bit of a scare early on even though the U.S. didn't come back to win that game 6-3. Uh, there certainly was a, a very valiant effort by Germany and then they come out and beat the Czech Republic. So that's certainly going to keep them out of the relegation discussion for sure and certainly give them a shot at going into the quarterfinals and see if they can do any damage in the knockout round. So Germany, again, with a big win over the Czech Republic. Team Sweden continued their round-robin domination and continued their winning streak that they've had for quite some time now with a 5-2 win over Switzerland. Of course, that round-robin streak of victories was certainly put to the test in the other game they had in this tournament against the Finns early on, which resulted in an overtime win for Sweden. So it was a close call. Uh, but they kept the streak alive and continued to roll here as they beat the Switzerland team 5-2. to two. So Sweden and Finland certainly going to be the top two teams in Group A in the game that they had earlier will likely decide who finishes first and second. So looking good for the Swedes to end up in first place in Group A. Now the other game of the day saw Team Canada battling Team Russia. Of course the Russians coming off a stunning loss to the Czech Republic and Team Canada coming off a big win over the U.S. after getting down early in that game and things certainly took a dramatic turn that we did not really see coming. Not a big shocker here that the Russians won but they won by such a lopsided six to nothing victory. It was certainly one of the worst losses if not the worst loss in the, for Team Canada in World Junior history. Certainly a terrible game. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong. There really wasn't much of their game that was really all that positive. And to make matters worse, which will kind of segue into the injuries here, is they lost their top player, Alexis Lafreniere, who's projected to be the 2020 first overall selection, which appears to be a potentially serious knee injury. Uh, it's hard to say exactly what the call will be. I know he's had an MRI and Team Canada is saying now it looks as though it may not be as bad as they originally feared. And as, as of the recording of this video, at least, he has not been ruled out of the tournament. But based on watching the replay and based on what all the comments are out there, it, it really doesn't look good. And uh, it's really hard to say uh, if he can go or not and if he can, uh, you know, what percentage he's going to be at. I mean, it's certainly not going to be 100% for sure. It could very well just be like a, maybe a sprain. Um, but it could be, you know, a potential like MCL tear or something. It could be pretty significant. So we'll see what happens here with Lafreniere. But he's certainly going to be a big blow to Canada if he can't play. And after a devastating loss uh, in dramatic fashion here to the Russians, it's certainly not going to make matters uh, any worse. The team's going to be probably a little bit fragile moving forward if they don't have Lafreniere in the lineup. So we'll see how they respond and whether or not he's going to be good to go. Except there's been lots of reports saying he's not as bad as they originally feared, but... We will see what happens. They don't play until tomorrow, so we may not get much more of an update until that time. Now, there's also been some other injuries around the World Juniors that are certainly having their impact. Like I said, with the Finns, they've lost one of their top players in Rasmus Kupari, the uh, 2018 first-round selection of the LA Kings, uh, lost to a knee injury. Looks like that could be a serious injury, and his season might be completely over. He's been playing over in North America in the American Hockey League, goes over to the World Juniors, and now has this happen. So uh, he's had a pretty solid year overall with his development, and the Kings were quite pleased 
with how far he's come, but this is not going to be good news uh, for him and his continued development for the remainder of the year. Uh, we'll see how long he's going to be out, but his season possibly could be over. And Bruins prospect of the Czech Republic, uh, Jacob Laukau, is also out with a knee injury as well. Uh, may not be quite as serious as Kapari, but certainly going to be out for the remainder of the tournament at least. Not quite sure exactly how far beyond that he will be out, but still, uh, either way, so we've, that's three knee injuries that we've had here over the last couple of days. Not good news for any of those countries. Now, of course, as I mentioned, and I'm sure you probably heard about by now, we had a bit of a controversial ending to the Canada-Russia game uh, with the Russian team winning 6 to nothing. Now, of course, what had happened, in case you're not familiar, was Canadian captain Baird Hayton did not take off his helmet during the national anthem, uh, which is played at the end of every game for the winning squad. After the game's over, they do the player of the game for each team. Um, then they do the anthem for the winning team, and then they shake hands. So, of course, Hayton didn't take his helmet off, which is kind of viewed as upon as being disrespectful, just like you take your hat off if you're watching or you take your helmet off if you're on the ice uh, to show respect to any national anthem. Uh, that's just common practice around the sport. Uh, he did not do so. Uh, the Russian captain was uh, very uh, upset over this and really the entire Russian team, and I'm sure many of their fans watching, did not uh, like the fact that that was taking place. You could see the Russian players uh, you know, up in arms over this. But unfortunately, Hayton didn't seem to realize what he did and didn't really, you know, mean it to be disrespectful for what he said because he did release a statement shortly thereafter through Hockey Canada apologizing for the incident, indicating that he basically got caught up in the moment uh, and didn't realize what had happened because uh, as he went through the handshake line, uh, some of the players, including the Russian captain, wouldn't shake his hand. Um, and he was asked in the media scrum afterwards about the incident and he didn't seem to understand why they wouldn't shake his hand. So I guess when he says he didn't mean it to be disrespectful and he kind of got caught up in the moment, I, I do kind of want to believe that as much as I am very disappointed with what happened as a Canadian, of course, I'm, you know, I don't want to see that type of uh, thing happen uh, to a Canadian player and, you know, create such a controversy. He does need to be aware of the spotlight he's at. It's a major stage, lots of pressure. But we also have to remember as fans and everybody watching this that these guys are still just kids. We get these controversies pretty much on a yearly basis. If you look back through the World of Juniors, at least in the more recent years, there's been something that's taken place. You know, quite a bit. I mean, look at Elias Anderson of Sweden a couple of years ago, tossed his silver medal in the crowd, didn't want it. You know, he was very emotional after he lost. These guys are used to winning and being the best of the best in their country. When you get countries like the U.S. and Canada, Russia, Sweden, Finland, like they're, you know, anything short of a gold medal for these guys is typically considered a failure. And I know there's a different, you know, points of view on that, whether or not they should look at it or not. But, you know, fact is that is how... Many of them see things, and unfortunately, they don't always react well in the heat of the moment, under pressure on such a big stage with all this pressure on them. So all these kids, regardless of what country they're from, I'm certainly usually willing to try to overlook it as long as they apologize and feel like they've actually learned from it. I know with Leas Anderson, uh, you know, he did eventually apologize and move forth. I mean, there was some controversy last year on Maxime Comtois. Uh, you know, there's there's something every year. Like, it just seems to be the case here. Um, now, as far as Hayden goes, like I said, I'm not going to, uh, you know, condone the, the actions. Like, as a Canadian, it disappoints me. But at the same time, you know, I do accept the apology and move forward. But something else that I've noticed here in this World Junior Tournament, at the end of the Canada-U.S. game, when uh, U.S. player Shane Pinto was accepting his Player of the Game Award, he looked into the camera and uh, gave a big F you to the cameraman. I don't really see uh, that a whole lot of discussion being around that. I know there was some talk on social media about it, but it really doesn't seem to be much of a talk on YouTube. I know, same time, uh, I haven't seen any kind of apology on that regard. Um, so, you know, there, there's always something. But at the end of the day, like, we got to realize, like I said, that they're just kids still. They're not mature enough to always handle these situations. And I've seen people, all kinds of hate online of Barrett Hayton should be suspended or he should be stripped of the captaincy or he should be this, he should be that. And, and you know what? It's not a good thing. I don't condone it, but I think we're all being a little too, too critical. So at the end of the day here, I don't want to come across like I'm defending him because I'm not. Like I, what he did was wrong, clearly, but he has apologized, which is the main thing. It looks like he's learned from it and hopefully we can move forward here. And the same thing, like I've said, with other kids from other countries in the past years where we've had you know other types of situations. Moral of the story is here, I just think it's time to move on and hopefully everybody's learned from yet another mistake that we've seen here in controversial fashion at the World Juniors. So of course, let me know what your thoughts are on the tournament so far, your highlights of the day from the 28th and what your thoughts are on the Hayton situation. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments and we can discuss further. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it as well. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you for watching and I will catch you next time.